Hello, Today crew. I feel like I'm in a better mood now. So if you saw the previous videos at Greenford, I'll hopefully not slate the manual car. Yes, I'm in a manual car. What am I doing in the manual car, you may ask, because if you're new to the channel, you might not ask that question. But if you are currently subscribed, then you'll know how much I take a dislike into manual cars. However, you'll find me in one. And also, I'm here at South Hall Test Centre near Central London. How much more ghetto can you get? All right, anyways, I'm going to show you a test route. This test route, don't worry if you're not doing your test at South Hall. This will show you huge, massive roundabouts, especially two of the roundabouts that are super big here. Um, you'll see how to do a spiral controlled roundabout that's very busy. And also we're going to be joining dual carriageways, multiple speed changes, lane changes, following signs for independent driving and much more. So let's get started. So to start this ancient car, what we do is we get out, we put the crankshaft in, we wind it up like a... Uh, no, you don't. You just push the clutch down and you turn that button, or you push that button, and that's the start stop button. So the engine's now on. I'm going to keep the clutch down, prepare the car by moving the gear lever to the left and up and into number one. First gear is only for moving away. Now, that's my prepare. I can add to the prepare by adding the signal, which will benefit other road users. I've turned it off because we do have somebody that's coming down the road. I think they want to take my parking space. So I'm gonna do my all round observations, gently raise the clutch to the biting point, adding the gas disengages the parking uh, handbrake. So I am just getting used to that because my vehicle is different. It's the same vehicle as this, although it's an automatic. So there's slight differences with that electronic brake. Um, if you accelerate, that disengages it. Also, I'm gonna stop here, mirror, mirror, signal left as I'm going to turn left. That was a little bit late. Do try to signal roughly five car lengths before the end of the road. Now, there are some slight differences. The hold technology is the same. So we have hold written here. That's the same. So when I accelerate or tap the brake, that will disengage. I'm checking I'm still in first gear, holding the biting point. Then the hold will turn off once I tap the gas, right, left, right. Hold the clutch, hold the clutch, biting point, biting point, gently up. I'm going to get a little bit of air in the car, guys. I'm cooking in here. So slightly rolling the window down. Oncoming vehicle is in the right side. I have no space to go around this parked car to get past that car. So that's a meeting situation. Check the mirrors. I use my shoulder. Make sure I'm still in first gear. Biting point, hold the biting point, hold the biting point straight all the way up off the clutch then on the gas. I'll try to be a more clearer way with my feet next time, guys, so you can see how the clutch and the accelerator work in tandem when changing gears. I will go through that in more detail later in the video. However, I have a double-decker bus coming towards me. Interior mirror for my change of speed and stop. There's no space to get past that bus. So I must stop here in order to allow this vehicle to pass through before I continue. So this is another meeting situation. I've put the whole technology on, checking I'm in first, Jesus Christ, the whole technology didn't work, whole technology on, checking I'm in first gear, biting point, gas, whole technology switches off once I find the gas, now back, stop again, nowhere for me to go, whole technology on, biting point, set the gas, not holding, uh, still on hold, wait, 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 now set the gas, that will turn the hold off, gently raise the clutch up, and then add more gas. Gas off, clutch down, second gear, clutch up, gas on. So you can see how when one foot releases one pedal, the other foot goes down on the other pedal, then we go up on that pedal, then we go down on the other pedal. You can work them in tandem, like a set of scales. When one side goes down, the other side goes up. Braking, second gear, down on clutch, first gear, up on clutch, off brake, back on gas. So I'm gonna try not to say too many bad things about manual cars and just try to be useful on this video. Um, if you agree with me, then please give me some love in the comments. 
Right, if this, video, if this video gives you any value, please don't forget to like as well. Okay, so as we're reaching the end of the road, it's a 20 road, maintain your speed. I'm in second gear here, which is giving me some engine braking. I'm holding the brake on as well, as I've got less space, less speed with the oncoming vehicle going over the center line into my lane. And the downhill also need brakes to keep control of speed. Mirror, mirror, signal left. Again, another bit of a late signal there from Mr. Driving Instructor talking too much. Right, left, right, minimum observations. Gently up on the clutch, gently on the gas, off the gas, second gear, up on the clutch, back on the gas, off the gas, back down on the clutch, third gear, back up on the clutch, back down on the gas, 20 miles an hour, so no gas. I'm at 21, 20 now, okay. I tried to look for the technology for the ding dong noise on this shitty manual car. Sorry, I didn't say that out loud. On this manual car, it doesn't have it. it doesn't have a sunroof, doesn't have electronic seats, doesn't have. Okay, turning right, third exit, interior mirror, right mirror, 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 mirror. Look at the sign, see the lane, see the lane marking, signal roughly five car lengths away, brake, brake, brake. Clutch down all the way, second gear up and the clutch down, back on the clutch, back into first gear, off the brake, right, left, right, look at the tires, up on the clutch, on the gas, off the clutch, off the gas, on the clutch, off the clutch, back on the gas, mirror, mirror, signal left, turn left, let the steering go, they're too far from the crossing, 20 miles an hour, make sure you keep to the speed limit, regardless of other cars around you going over, okay? stay at the speed limit you must stay at the speed limit so if you saw my previous videos i went ah did it again over the speed limit it's too easy back to the speed limit there we go stay at the speed limit now an old trick i used to do is i'm going to take fourth gear now fourth gear used to hold 20 miles an hour without any acceleration i know this road's very long the visibility is very good there's no need for me to be using any of the pedals at the moment, so I'm not going to. That way the car's almost like on cruise control. It will maintain the 20 speed, providing the vehicle is the same as it used to be. Well, we've got 19, 18. Let's see how low the car goes. 18, are you gonna hold 18? No, 17. These modern cars, I tell you, they can have a high gear that they're peeved off. Look at the speed that that vehicle's going at. So if you saw my previous videos, this, I think, personally, it's more dangerous than 30 miles an hour. The pavements are protected by bollards. They're far enough apart. Very wide cycle lane, very wide road, very good visibility, and it's 20 miles an hour. Please explain it to me. If it's to do with emissions, I understand the slower you go, the less emissions there are, but I could be doing 20 miles an hour in first gear and put out more emissions than be doing 20 miles an hour with no gas in fourth gear. So it does depend on the way you drive. Interior mirror, left mirror signal, following the signs of central London. Okay, this is this one-way strip here that takes us onto the dual carriageway where we're gonna be going towards Norfolk. Norfolk will be the third exit. This is the target roundabout. This is a one-way slip road joining on to a slip road coming off of the A40 dual carriageway. This is the main dual carriageway leading from central London to the west. This is where we're going to go on and we're going to keep the left lane. So what we're going to do is just hold the center here more towards the left if you like towards this solid line on the left. Do not cross solid line. Mirror mirror if it's safe and merge. If not, which it's more than likely not going to be safe, stop. Hold technology on, find a biting point, add the gas, look over the shoulder, lots of gas, lots of clutch, up, 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 speed, 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 go, go, go. If you are in an automatic car, all you need to do is release the brake and add the accelerator. Seriously, guys, please make your life more simple, and I think simple means safer. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, so now I'm using the center lane. This is the lane you'll need for turning right third exit. This is a spiral roundabout with three lanes on the approach. We needed the left lane until we reached that traffic light to go into the center lane and then follow the center lane. It's marked out with H-A-R-D. 
apostrophe W for Harrow. As you come round, keep your right signal on, let go of the steering wheel slightly, and allow the car to self-spiral to the left side, to the far left lane, which is the correct and safest lane you'll need to go towards Harrow. Mirror, mirror, signal left, the traffic light's green, and the flow of traffic seems to be proceeding. Keep to the left lane by relaxing the steering and allowing the steering to keep you in the left lane. Look ahead and scan the road effectively and cancel the signal. You have someone cut you up like that blue car, thank you grandma, then hold back, create more space. This is a 20 mile an hour road, so make sure you keep to the speed limit. I cannot stress that enough. 20 is plenty annoying. Right, keep to the speed limit, road safety, etc. We know it makes sense. Do we? Anyways, keep to the speed limit. 20 miles an hour. Yeah, right, car in front's turning. Slow down interior mirror, changing down into first gear because they've made me slow down to less than walking speed. Now I'm going to check all mirrors to check for filtering traffic like motorbikes. And it's a good habit to have. Every so often, check your mirrors for filtering traffic. Jesus Christ, it's 20 miles an hour. Keep to 20 miles an hour. Am I the only one doing 20 miles an hour? Unless you count the car behind that I'm holding up. Yes, I am the only one doing 20 miles an hour. I've seen the police, no, shut up Scott. Just shut up Scott. Right, look at the road ahead and we're going 20 miles an hour. Okay, what's happening? Bus stop, yellow box, always drive over yellow. Okay, always drive over yellow. If you're turning right, you're allowed to stop inside the yellow box junctions, providing your exit's clear. 20 miles an hour, Scott, 20 miles an hour. <sighs> okay, use both lanes. The sign shows us to use both lanes. And then we're gonna look ahead to see what might be over that hill. Any warning triangles? No, but plenty of 20 mile an hour signs. Be prepared to stop over the other side of a hill as there may be a queue of traffic. At the traffic lights, turn left, interior mirror, exterior mirror to the left, and make sure you apply your signal roughly five car lengths from the junction. If there is a road before the road you want, the five car length rule always applies. So you'd signal, drive past the road, then take the second road. As if you signal any less than five car lengths, this really will not be enough time to benefit other road users. So timing on signals is impeccable. Make sure that you always keep to the same five car length rule. You will have driver, either driving instructors teach you six to 12 or other methods. This may suffice as there is no clear outline from the DVSA. It just says that it benefits other road users making sure you give enough time for them to see the signal and react to the signal so it doesn't tell you exactly how far away which i would prefer that we had yes and no answers very clear cut this is the way i like to teach people when driving however it's super frustrating so there is some kind of another thing that a lot of people don't like or a lot of driving instructors don't like um because they are a bit picky and I can say this because I am one and yes at times I am very picky uh, they don't like rhymes a lot of them don't like rhymes so early vision early decision 20 is plenty um, you know can you walk out that's not a rhyme uh, what else is a rhyme there's other ones I can't top of my head can't come up with let's talk about this bicycle just said 20 is plenty there we go 15 15 miles an hour can I overtake? He's doing 17 miles an hour. If I overtake, I'm gonna pretty much stay at this speed limit and go past him, which would take forever to try and get past him. So let me just stay here. I've got to keep a safe distance. All right, he's now on his space. Check the mirrors, interior, exterior, and move past. Do the speed limit, interior, exterior, left. Make sure I allow plenty of space for him and then pass. Okay, now I did slightly exceed the speed limit there, guys. Okay, so I went up to 22 miles an hour to overtake the cycle. Is that acceptable? Is it okay on the driving test? Can I give you a yes and no answer? No, I can't. What does the law tell you? Anything over 20 miles an hour is over the speed limit. It's 20 miles an hour, full stop. Will you be given any leeway on the test or by speed cameras or by officials? What does the law say? So how can I give you a clear cut answer? 
that's the car assessing that vehicle was pulling out and decides to try and stop me that's called anti-collision technology sometimes you have a vehicle like that and it will beep at you just switch it off if you don't want it but that's what that was now thank God, we've had no change to the road whatsoever, but we have a higher speed limit of 30 miles an hour now. Now, please correct me if I'm wrong. Would it be dangerous to do 30 miles an hour here? Right? But we just had a road identical to this that was 20, so somebody help me. Please, somebody that's an official, help me. Write in the comments, give us the official reason so we know and then I can pass this information on to people and tell them why and really connect with people. Okay, turning left, interior mirror, left signal and check the traffic. Right, left, right, he's got a right signal, look at his wheels. Right, left, right and look at their wheels. Clutch up, biting point, add the gas, in the wrong gear. First gear, up on the clutch, back on the gas, and off we go. So there's another downside, obviously. It's the driver's responsibility. I take full responsibility for that, moving away in second gear. Felt it, changed the gear, kept going, not an issue, okay? Maybe I get a driver fault for the gears, moving away in second isn't ideal, puts an extra strain on the actual gear itself. So for car consideration, not great, could get marked down. Um, what I'm trying to say is if I was in an automatic car, would that situation arise? And we all know it doesn't, okay? So, mate, it's your life. You choose what kind of drive you, what car you want, and go for it. Now, this is really important. Look at this roundabout. Look at the arrow in the left lane. If you're not given any direction, follow the road ahead. That means you need to use this right lane. Look at the tires of those vehicles and what lane those vehicles are in. Look at the lane for those vehicles and their markings. Depending what lane they're in, depending on what road markings they have, I'm going too fast to stop and there's a vehicle behind me. I check my mirror, that would not be an appropriate situation for me to stop because if I did, I'd have to slam my brakes on, most likely have the vehicle behind me, which is following quite closely, hit me. So for that reason, I continue to go through the yellow light. What does a yellow light mean? Prepare to stop. Here I'm at the roundabout, second lane on the right here to go straight. Why, you may ask? Well, if you've seen my previous video at Greenford, this is a test route for Greenford also. Everybody in the left lane goes into Sainsbury's. One day I will be wrong, but it's been 10 years and I've never seen anybody use the left lane to go straight. For that reason, I would suggest using the right lane to go straight. Yep, my disclaimer, highway code, you use the left lane to go straight unless road markings stay otherwise. That's the safest lane to use, and yes, it would be. Check your mirrors on the exit if you do use the right lane to see if there's any traffic following you too closely on the right. What does a yellow light mean? Stop. That time I did stop and the vehicle behind me was very far away. The whole technology is on, which I'm allowed to do, which secures the car and then I can release the brake. Now I know I'm in neutral by giving that a bloody slap. And then I can release the clutch and relax my leg and my back. Jesus Christ, man. Okay, anyways, now, waiting for the traffic light, back down on the clutch, into first gear, gently find the biting point which is holding the clutch, which is melting the clutch, which is bad for the clutch, but a lot of learners that are learning to drive, you want to do this, that way you know that you're ready and prepared to go. So when that light changes, there's no delay, you're already prepared, all you need to do is release the brake or add the gas in my situation, watch that lady's feet, see her body language, give way lines, Right, left, right, I added a signal to the left because there's a possibility I could go a different direction as there's no mandatory signs at that junction. Okay, um, although it's a left at the giveaway lines, I didn't see any no right turns, okay? But obviously I'm going left, um, I'm just adding the signal just to clarify to the pedestrians and everybody else that I'm going left. I feel the signal would benefit, if I'm wrong, right down in the comments below. Okay, 30 miles an hour, woo, thank God. All right, we're in third gear, down on the clutch, fourth gear, no gas in between changing, just I knew I was at a good speed for fourth, so I'm gonna use it, 24 miles an hour, back on the gas a little bit, 25, and off the gas. Just let it roll, even go into fifth, clutch down, fifth gear, go into six if you want, clutch down, sixth gear, let the car roll. I'm not even using the gas. That is a nice thing about manual cars. I used to really enjoy that. 
a block change from sixth to third gear there. So on the brake, on the clutch, down, and block change here to first gear. Okay, so you just hold the clutch down, choose the appropriate gear. That's another good thing about manual cars, I'm not gonna lie. I did like that, it's a lot of fun, but you're not on a race car track, so I don't know, do you really need it? And if you do, you've got triptronic gears, you've got flappy paddles, you can downshift, tap, tap, boom, back down into second gear, first gear, boom, 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 tap, 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 down you go. Do your engine braking, do your turn, accelerate on the exit, have that control, have that acceleration, have fun in your car, brilliant. That's what manual cars are all about. Do you really do that when you're commuting to work and home from work? Or uh, wherever you're going. If you do, and that's the type of style of driving you want, yeah man, go for it. I've got nothing against manual cars, really. I just, they kill my back, they kill my leg. I'm commuting every single day. It is a hassle. Everything's going electric, everything's going automatic from 2030 in this city and most other cities in the world. So do you really, since as that is so close, um, really want to put yourself through this whole process, spend more money, spend more time in manual cars, because you need to, because you have to have more experience and more control over the car, because it's a manual, in order to get ready for your driving test, and then pass, and considering in today's day, where there's like 300,000 people waiting for a driving test, do you want to have to spend double the amount of time, double the amount of money, wait double the amount of time to take a test? If you do, drive a manual car. Okay, turning left, following the signs of central London. Right, left, right, up on the clutch, on the gas, and let's go! Second gear, off the clutch, down into third gear, on the clutch, off the clutch. Every time I'm going down on clutch, changing gear, up on the clutch, and then I'm adding gas after I go up on the clutch. Fifth gear, boom! Sixth gear, boom! 50 miles an hour, boom! Mirror, mirror, signal, shoulder check. Mirror, mirror, signal, shoulder check. Mirror, mirror, signal, shoulder check. Maneuver. Oh, central London, you say. Middle lane, okay then. Mirror, mirror, signal, shoulder check. Mirror, mirror, signal, shoulder check. Mirror, mirror, signal, shoulder check. Gently moving in, gently moving in. Signal still on, signal still on. In the lane, straighten up and cancel signal. There's a nice safe lane change while holding the speed or slightly increasing speed, not over the speed limit to change lanes. Looking ahead, I see a change of speed going down and making sure that I'm at the change of speed, at that speed, not like the van, when I reach the speed limit. So I'm at 36 miles an hour, that's fine. Scanning the road ahead, I can see that there is traffic. Brake lights on the vehicle in front, slowing down, maintaining a two second gap in the dry. So if we are reading a two second gap, how do we measure a two second gap from the car in front? Once the car in front reaches the bridge, we start to say only a fall breaks a two second ball. And I didn't get to the shadow of the bridge. Let's try the next one. Only a four breaks a two second ball. See, I'm not the shadow, now I am. So I'm more than two seconds. If I can say that sentence and then reach that point before I say that sentence, that's when I'm wrong. So I must make sure that I can say the whole sentence before I reach that reference point where I started to say the sentence when that car started to reach that point. I hope that makes sense. Now, this is the point where most people will fail the driving test because they're quite comfortable in this middle lane. Mirror, mirror, signal left. Ah, get myself over here. Woo! Now, looking at the car in that mirror, it was in the center of my mirror, not filling my mirror. And that means there's enough distance for me to move across into the left lane, showing my mirror, showing my signals to the examiner. They know I'm a safe driver, correctly reading the distance and changing lanes. That's the most important part about changing lanes, is about seeing. Look over your shoulder if you're comfortable, knowing the distance from the vehicle, keeping your speed, at the correct speed or increasing your speed if it's safe to do so when changing lanes can be beneficial and then make your way through the lane change a very smooth gradual angle no sudden changes of speed or direction as sudden changes of speed and direction are most likely when accidents will happen so if you miss an exit on the dual carriageway or motorway my suggestion is keep going stay in your lane be safe reach the next exit, turn around and come back. Yes, of course, this will add time to your journey, but at least you'll get there safely. Okay, we've got countdown markers on the left, three, two, one, and then we'll have our exit on the left. 
So here I'm going to mirror, mirror, signal left, and this will take me towards Greenford Roundabout, guys. So mirror, mirror, signal left, roughly five car lengths. We can signal a bit earlier as we're traveling faster, that's fine. And now I know I'm going to go to the third exit turning right. So I'm going to keep the right lane as I exit, going straight towards the right lane. No need for me to move left, right. As we exit dual carriageway, we'll most certainly have a speed change down. And we can see that by the traffic lights. This was my excuse I just in the last video, where I didn't see speed changes because they're half a mile up in the sky. And I'm too focused on the road, the lane, the other traffic, and all the other hazards involved. Cool. I can't even see it through the roof. Like, look, can you see that speed sign, that speed change up there? No. Can you see it now? Yes. Is that a nice place to put speed change? I don't know. Write it in the comments down below. Right, turning right, I'm in this lane. Why go to the very far right lane when I can use this lane to go right? Traffic lights changing, check the interior mirror. Try not to run the light like the next guy over there. And then hold technology. There we go, no handbrake. Now these guys used to terrify me. <gasps> What's this guy going to do when I go forwards? Is he going to come into my lane? You better not. Right, clutch down into first gear, gently find a biting point, getting ready to outrun the lorry next to me because he's he's gearing to go. Look, look, he's going, he's going, it's race. And off we go. I'm in the middle lane, get out of my lane, lorry. Middle lane, middle lane, middle lane, that's me. Okay, now I'm passing the second exit. Mirror, mirror, signal left. If it's safe, I'll move across to the left lane. If it's not safe, I'll stay in that lane where that lorry is and another lorry and where I am. Now, this is super important, guys. A lot of people don't do this. Make sure I keep my signal on for the exit. Clutch up, gas on, slowly clutch up, slowly gas more on. Keep to that curb. Keep to the left, keep to the left. Don't spiral out into that right lane. Keep to the left, keep to the left, keep to the left. Change gear, you idiot, change gear. Right, now next gear. No, there's a pedestrian at the pedestrian crossing. What are they gonna do? Well, they're not near it, so I'm gonna keep going. Check the interior mirror, check the right mirror as I'm gonna merge or slightly change direction. And there's parked cars coming up, so I'll change direction even more. This guy's turning right or doing a U-turn, so I'm gonna slow, check the interior mirror, change the speed and down into first gear. Bloody manual cars. Slowly up on the clutch, slightly on the gas, a little bit more gas, a little bit of gas, watch this person. And then down on the clutch, in second gear, back on the gas, off the gas, down on the clutch, into third gear, back up on the clutch, back on the gas. 20 miles an hour! In the mirror! <sighs> oh, back to first, no, sorry, second gear. Okay, okay guys, sorry, I'm sorry about this. We're all gonna be doing 20 miles an hour. No, I'm joking, I'm gonna get off this road. Okay, take the next road on the right, hatch markings. Drive on top of them if they're broken lines to get the safest position as early as possible for turning right. What's the position for turning right, Scott? Hold the center line, then reach the center line, then clutch up, then gas on, then clutch control. Hold the biting point, hold the biting point. Then get the car in control, then add the gas, then you're off, then gas off, clutch down, second gear. Oh, less space, less speed. Back on the brake, holding the brake, controlling the car, maintaining the safe gap from the left as long as uh, there's space. I keep going, so I'm slowing down to see if there's space. So slowing down, slowing down. Is there space? Is there space? No. Okay. Watching myself, watching them, making sure there's room. Look how slow. There's another car going, but they've got a duty of care as much as I do. And I just waited for somebody and they were quite far away. So my turn, all right. And then I reached the roundabout to turn right, second exit. Interior mirror, exterior mirror, right, signal right, roughly five car lengths from the junction, right, left, right, go. Do not even look there because you have priority. I've already looked anyways, okay? So a lot of people, they go out the roundabout staring at that car approaching from the left, slow down and stop on the roundabout. Whose priority is it? Keep going, you're the boss. Once you're on the roundabout, you've made your checks, you know it's safe, join the roundabout, you're the boss, 
keep going if it's safe to do so. Okay, turning left, interior mirror, exterior mirror left, signal left to let the car behind and in front know I'm turning left. Benefits of a road users, we must use the signal. If you're driving around at three o'clock in the morning and no one's around, do you need to signal? Well, according to the DVSA, we must signal providing it benefits other road users. So I hope that clears up any gray areas for yes or no answers on do I signal. Maintain a slow speed here as we have a left right bend or right left bend and park cars on the exit. It's very common on this road to have large vehicles coming towards you like rubbish trucks and if they are on the route during the early hours of the morning then you may have to pass these vehicles on these narrow roads so bear that in mind when booking your driving test you have school runs and you will have large vehicles like rubbish trucks picking up and collecting rubbish on certain days of the week this is one of those roads that it can be very hectic and very difficult to pass interior mirror exterior mirror and check to, for your change direction both sides come in look how close this car is parked to the pavement that means that's a parked vehicle it also has its in external mirror folded in so that means i'm going to have to go round. can you see through the gap where the workmen are can you see under the vehicle's wheels can you see any oncoming hazards less space less speed go around this vehicle nice and slow checking both sides both mirrors making sure it's safe keep a slow speed i did that all at roughly five miles an hour which is walking speed off the gas down on the clutch second gear using the downhill momentum to be my accelerator and not adding any additional gas here it's doing 18 miles an hour in second gear no gas and no brake so i'm just letting the car do all the work for me 17 miles an hour back on the gas off the gas third gear Roundabout goes straight ahead, slow down. Second gear is a good gear for roundabouts. Right, left, right, proceeding with caution as it's safe and there's no priority on the right. They had the oncoming traffic on the exit, which I just slowed down a little bit for to see if there was room to continue. We're going to do the same again right, left, right, no traffic on the right. So it's safe, I'm gonna proceed with caution as I have the similar situation with oncoming traffic. So I have to make sure that there's enough room. So slowing down, checking my reference points if I have them so I know how far I am from the curb. And then I know that I'm a safe distance from the left so I can continue. Right, uh, having a look here, he's flashed his lights. Keeping to the lane markings the best I can, but often you do need to go over the white lines due to parked cars and curbs like these extending. We don't want to hit them. Now look at this, we're going to have to go through here at the same time. Nice and slow, nine miles an hour. We're both passing each other, still keeping our lane markings, and at that speed I'm able to assess the pavement and know if there's enough room. Checking the right mirror as I make my change of direction over to the right to make sure it's clear and there's no overtake traffic checking the left mirror here as I move slightly back into the lane markings and do my best to follow them and then checking right mirror as I come back out so you see I'm weaving down the road just following the road it's a wiggly road okay welcome to London and then that way I'm checking to see it safe and following the road and weaving through these narrow windy roads okay 20 miles an hour okay I'm doing 20 miles an hour but what is the speed limit? It is, and let's just make sure I'm definitely correct, because I have been wrong in Isleworth, because normally what I'd say is if there's no sign street lights, then that means it's a 30 mile an hour road. However, there's a short stretch of road from the Tesco's roundabout back towards the actual test center itself, where it's not very clearly signposted that it's a 20 mile an hour road. Oh, sorry, no, it's a 30 mile an hour road. Um, without uh, signs and uh, anyways just really look for signs guys it's just they're a nightmare sometimes slow down stop not enough room to continue check the interior exterior mirror for my change direction maintain a safe gap from the parked cars that's why I had to stop because the bus was too large at the end of the road turn left interior mirror exterior mirror left there's a keep clear zone here, but I can go over the keep clear zone to get to the giveaway lines. Right, left, right, clutch up, gas on, make sure you're in first gear, and then accelerate once you're straight. I'm going to be taking the next road coming up on the right, uh, decreasing speed, checking the interior mirror for change of speed, 
and then I'm going to take the next road on the right, so interior mirror, right exterior mirror, roughly five car lengths, so I'm going to start to signal, and now I'm holding the center line, holding the center line, keeping the steering straight, do not weave left, keep the steering straight, reach your center line of your new road to turn right, interior mirror, exterior mirror right, move around the parked vehicle, interior mirror, ex exterior mirror left, move back in, 20 miles an hour Scott, 20 miles an hour, right, I'm in second gear, I'm going up here, I'm just going to keep it in second gear, as a lower gear will help me to maintain my speed, or even increase my speed to go up a steep hill, not very steep, second gear will do, so just holding that, as it is a 20 mile an hour road, so mm, lots of reasons here to slow down, speed bumps, emerging traffic, slow down, less space, less speed, was that a safe time for that lady to emerge out? She was on a driving test. Did she cause me to slow down? How was the gap? What do you think? Write it in the comments down below. Sometimes this could be enough to fail you on a driving test because if you cause other road users to slow, stop or swerve without reason, oh yeah, then this can be regarded as a serious driver fault. So potentially, <coughs> excuse me, potentially that lady moved out, caused me to slow down that could be enough to fail you on the driving test. So if you are emerging out on narrow roads like these ones, you're emerging out these side roads, just make sure there's enough room because imagine I'm a bus. You're trying to emerge out of this side road here and this is a bus route, it's gonna happen to you, test center's just here, we're back now. And you emerge out and cause the bus to slow. You definitely failed your driving test. So just make sure that there's enough room, the road's wide enough for you to emerge out and then it's fine, it's safe, I'm not going to cause anyone to slow, stop, swerve, by all means, edge out. Okay, holding the center line, there is no white line, but I can see a tar line, crease, making my way to the next center line here, this is the correct position for my turn, and if I needed to stop and wait for oncoming traffic, that's where I stop and wait. Here we are, back at the test center, have a look at this car park, oh my god, look at that gate, there's like no room to get out here, none, it's super tight guys. So if you come here to do a driving test and you're asked to come in and out of that car park, you can't practice with your driving instructor. So I'm not too sure how you're gonna get any practice at doing that, but you do need to be really good. If you're doing it in automatic, fine. If you're doing it in the manual, impeccable clutch control. Now I'm gonna slow down and stop and pull up on the left here, but I'm not gonna go on the pavement. So I'm just gonna keep my correct distance, roughly uh, a drain whip for a steering wheel away and that's the correct reasonable gap to stop next to the pavement. I've been Scott, this has been the Two Day Pass. If you've enjoyed the video and it's gained any value, don't forget to like, subscribe for future content, stay safe, stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.